These are all different models of the same thing, a signal generator. It's an incredibly useful device for teaching about waves and sound. It's essentially an AC power supply, which, as well as letting me change the voltage or amplitude of the output, also lets me change the frequency. And I can demonstrate that very simply using a loudspeaker. Now, if you are going to connect a loudspeaker to a signal generator, you need to connect it to the low resistance output. And on this model, that's conveniently labelled low. I've got the frequency set to 4 times 100, so 400 hertz, and I've got the amplitude set to 0. This is what happens when I increase the amplitude. You can clearly hear that as I increase the amplitude of the output, the sound gets louder. And when I decrease the amplitude, the sound gets quieter. And this is what happens when I change the frequency. What you should have heard is that as I increase the frequency of the output, the pitch of the note gets higher. And when I decrease the frequency, the pitch gets lower. In fact, this is a really simple way to demonstrate how the properties of sound depend on amplitude and frequency. Another way of looking at the output from a signal generator is to use an oscilloscope. Now, when you're connecting an oscilloscope, you need to use the high resistance output. And again, that's clearly marked on this model. So let's see what happens when I change the amplitude. Again, you can see that as I increase the amplitude, the amplitude of the trace on the oscilloscope increases. And when I decrease the amplitude, the amplitude of the trace also decreases. Let's take a quick look at frequency. Now it should be clear that as I increase the frequency of the output of my signal generator, that increases the frequency of the trace on the oscilloscope. And obviously, when I decrease the frequency of the output, the frequency of the trace also decreases. Now, this is a really lovely setup for investigating the properties of sound. And you can do lots of other interesting things with it. One of the things I like to do is use it to test the range of frequencies my students can hear. It's a really simple experiment. You s connect the speaker, you set the frequency to about 10,000 hertz, which most of your students can hear, and you ask them to raise their hands. You then gradually increase the frequency and tell your students to put their hands down when they can no longer hear the note. You then do the opposite, decreasing the frequency, and tell them to put their hands down when they can't hear the low notes. And that way you can determine the range of frequencies your students can hear. There's another thing you can do with a signal generator, and that's to change the shape of the waveform. So far I've been using a sine wave, which gives a nice clear note, but I can also have a triangular wave, which sounds a bit like this. And a square wave, which sounds like this. And that sounds absolutely awful until you turn it off. <laughs>